When Musk first spoke of his visions of space colonization and interplanetary transport, many scoffed. The space industry, with its complexities and immense costs, had always been the dominion of governmental giants like NASA and Roscosmos. How could a private company like SpaceX, founded by a man whose primary success at that time was in online payments, challenge this status quo? Fast forward a couple of decades and the landscape looks very different. Musk's SpaceX has achieved what many believed was impossible, from landing and reusing rockets, which was a mind-boggling concept initially, to launching the Falcon Heavy with a Tesla Roadster aboard, SpaceX has continually upended expectations. And every time skeptics raised an eyebrow, questioning Musk's audacious goals, he and his team responded not with words, but with groundbreaking achievements. This is why it wasn't a complete surprise when the space exploration community buzzed with excitement last weekend as SpaceX showcased yet another pioneering feat. The center of all the excitement was the static fire test for the latest Starship Super Heavy prototype. While such tests might seem commonplace for SpaceX nowadays, this one had something special, the brand new water deluge system. Earlier in the month, SpaceX had given a sneak peek of this system, but as they say, seeing is believing. It wasn't until all 33 booster engines roared to life, forcing their ferocious heat downwards, that the true wonder of this system was realized. The Starship's Super Heavy Booster 9 was at the heart of this spectacle. Outfitted with 33 Raptor 2 engines, the images that followed were nothing short of breathtaking. The raw power of the Raptor 2 engines was evident, as they propelled Super Heavy with an astounding force. Yet, as is often the case with groundbreaking tech, challenges come along the way. Of the 33 engines that Super Heavy boasted, only 29 managed to roar to life during the recent test, leaving four silent. While it might sound like a small hiccup, in the space exploration industry even the minutest of errors can lead to significant setbacks. In comparison, during the test of Booster 7, 31 out of 33 engines ignited successfully. This recent test does bring to mind a somewhat reminiscent event, the first orbital launch of Starship on April 20th. Back then, out of the 33 engines, six did not operate as intended, which resulted in a dramatic explosion over the Gulf of Mexico. It's crucial to note that the circumstances and conditions between the orbital launch in April and the recent static fire test are quite different. Numerous modifications, upgrades, and improvements have been implemented on both the launch pad and the booster since then. Yet one cannot overlook the shared challenge in both tests, the engines. These engine challenges underscore the inherent complexities and unpredictabilities of space exploration. It is reported that the company is already in the advanced stages of developing an even more robust and efficient engine, the Raptor 3. This next generation engine is expected to address the issues faced with its predecessor and elevate the performance benchmarks even higher. The real star of the show, however, was the water deluge system. This marvel of engineering played a pivotal role in making this massive test more environmentally friendly. The water deluge system's intervention transformed the earlier dusty static fire from Booster 7 into a clean spectacle for Booster 9. Massive clouds of mist enveloped the orbital launch mount during the test. In the old days when SpaceX tested their rockets, the ground would get so stirred up that it looked like a mini sandstorm. This made it tough for engineers to see if something went wrong during the test. Plus, the noise was so loud. But things have changed in the recent rocket tests, all thanks to a new water system. Instead of a cloud of dust, there's now a big mist that appears when the rocket fires up. This mist comes from a lot of water turning into vapor because of the rocket's heat. And guess what? This misty curtain also makes things quieter. After the rocket test finished, the team checked everything to see if the new water system helped. And it did. The orbital launch mount looked almost like new. Before, the heat and force from the rocket engines would often leave marks or cause tiny damages. And the Booster 9 for this test looked just fine. When we look at all the changes SpaceX has made, it's clear they've learned a lot from the April 20th Starship launch. That day was tough, the launch pad was wrecked, and pieces from the rocket flew far away from where they launched it. This happened because they missed some important setups that other rockets usually have. For example, most rockets have something called a flame diverter. 
this helps move the fire from the engines in a safe direction so it doesn't cause harm. After that tough day in April, SpaceX didn't waste any time. They rolled up their sleeves and got to work, making over a thousand changes just to the Starship alone. Not only that, but they also put a lot of effort into upgrading the launch pad. And with Musk's ambitious plans, it's clear they're not slowing down. He's already eyeing a launch for the second Starship by the end of this summer. What's more, Musk has predicted a 60% success rate for reaching orbit on this next attempt. It's a bold statement, but given SpaceX's track record and rapid improvements, many are hopeful. The recent advancements and tests are more than just technological feats. They are crucial not only for SpaceX, but also for the United States in the ongoing space race. During a press briefing on the forthcoming Artemis II mission, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson emphasized the importance of speed. Comparing China's territorial claims on international islands to potential claims on lunar bases, he underscored the need to ensure that the moon remains accessible to all. Nelson's words hint at the deeper geopolitical implications of space exploration. With China ramping up its lunar missions, the race to the moon is not just about technological prowess, but also about strategic dominance. The Artemis II mission, which will circle the moon and is scheduled for launch in November 2024, is a testament to this heightened sense of urgency. Furthermore, the Artemis III, set for December 2025, aims to land astronauts on the moon for the first time since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. The U.S. is not the only player in the game, however. While the country's relationship with Russia remains fragile due to political issues like the Ukraine invasion, in space, both nations maintain a collaborative stance. However, China's rapid advancements are a different ballgame, setting the stage for a new space race between the U.S. and China. That's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.